We'll give everyone a moment here to join, make sure that everything is working. Hopefully everybody's doing well. There we go. I can see the stream has begun. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. This little furry guy here is Apollo. And we're getting ready here to take a look at your monthly forecast for the next six to eight weeks. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and for giving me a couple of moments to get everything set up. Apollo's still waking up. You can see him doing that right now. I'm going to put him down so he can get back to sleep and we can get to work. All right, so welcome to your monthly forecast. Uh, we're going to take a look at all of the energy coming through for the sign of Gemini for the month ahead. And as you know, with all my readings, the goal is to empower, inform, and hopefully inspire <laughs> so that we can make the most of this time. Uh, today, your totem is a praying mantis, which is a really cool energy to connect to because it's a hunter, a really good hunter at that. And it's also a very sort of timely energy. It has this ability to pick the perfect timing. So I'm looking forward to breaking that symbol down a little bit and talking about how that's going to aid you in the next month ahead. Um, as you can see here, the format is as follows. We'll begin with channeled messages, which come through uh, dreams, through research, and through my own meditation. Then we'll get into the Celtic cross. And uh, we'll talk about all the, other, all the other elements after that. But basically, um, I like to take a nice, not just a 180, but like a 360 degree view of everything that's going on. So uh, we'll make sure that we get into all of that in just a little bit. If you enjoy what you see here, please hit the like and subscribe button, especially if you're brand new. It helps the channel grow. And uh, when we hit the next milestone, we'll do some cool stuff. And um, it also allows me to do more videos here. As you noticed over the past month or so, I've been doing a lot more of the uh, one, one card pulls every day. Um, I do my best, by the way, to get that done the day before, but sometimes I have to do it the day of. Right now, I'm in the process of putting a bunch of stuff into um, containers because we have rain coming this weekend. So that's why things have been the day of today. So thank you so much. I saw a couple people complaining and I'm like, it takes a while. So I appreciate your support on that. All right. Um, but please do follow me across social media if you would like reminders. I will always tell you what's coming through usually the day before and sometimes the day of just so that you don't ever miss a show or ever miss any sort of content that comes through. And if you'd like to show some love and support, you can do that through Super Chat, Super Stickers, and also by becoming a channel member if you'd like to. It's optional, but again, it helps with growth of the channel. And that, my friends, is just about everything. Let's get ready now for channeled messages. Again, I actually met your totem yesterday when I was um, looking at my lamp post. And there was a praying mantis right on the back, blending in to the point that I kind of didn't notice it initially. And uh, I was like, I'm going to tuck that away. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit about that when we do your reading today. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and pull open the um, presentation here. And I'll move to the side so you can see me. So praying mantis, by the way, you can call it uh, when we do it plural, it can be mantid or mantises. I did, did mantids because it's a little bit easier to um, to say. All right, so let's talk a little bit about their eyes. Uh, mantids can move their eyes 180 degrees. It's pretty impressive. They can see behind their heads. They also have two compound eyes and three simple ones, which give them this stereoscopic 3D vision. They don't always have ears. Some species don't. Um, they either have one or none. And um, this is kind of reminding us that not everything is what it sees. Even if we think we see everything, we may be missing a subtle message or a subtle layer beneath it. So um, they may have 3D vision, but they don't hear what's going on. And so in communication, this is why I chose the Four of Cups, you could be thinking that you're hearing something, but sometimes it could even be like misunderstanding a word because words have a lot of different shades of meaning. Um, and when we're listening, we may not even know like homonyms. There are certain things that are, are we say them the same way, but they're spelled differently, like T-H-E-R-E, -E, T-H-E-I-R, and T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. So um, they are there, um, and then there, as in something that um, it's that they own. And um, what was the other one? Oh, it's over there. But it's all there, there, there. <laughs> it's kind of confusing sometimes. So there could just be a misinterpretation of the actual word, and that's a great example. Um, there could also be something going on where you're, you know, there's an assumption, a base assumption that someone understands what you're talking about, but they may not have had the same life experiences, right? So this is a chance to really slow down a little bit and check, check in with one another. And if you're the listener, you can say, I think I heard this, or 
Um, I'm not super clear on this. Could you elaborate? If you're the speaker, pause enough uh, and often enough and long enough to let people bring up their own points of view. I was talking a few days ago about how frustrating it was when I had a conversation with someone recently. They wouldn't stop talking. And then it was a, it was a disagreement and then they just kept talking louder and talking over me. And that is a stalemate. You're not going to get anything done. So in uh, any time there's even like a, a conflict negotiation, constructive criticism, or you're trying to argue a point, you still have to leave space for someone. Even if you hear something you don't want to hear, let them finish, then ask questions or then say how that made you feel and, and ask them, you know, if you can find a way to, to reach a common, common goal. Try to see the situation from both angles. I think this is what we're talking about. And uh, you might find a solutions there, something easy, something that you both missed. If you're going to do something, we're going to enter into retrograde really soon here. If I have time before the storm comes this weekend, I'm going to try to get a video out. But I have to break down all of my equipment on Friday night just in case it's going to rain in here. And I want to be prepared because I saw drips and this is the first storm and I have to see which room the rain is going to be. So I'll try to get this out if I can this week, a retrograde toolkit. I'll make it a short video as well. But one of the things that I would put in a toolkit for retrograde is to not rush. And sometimes we have to do a contract. You know, I've, I've actually moved during retrogrades. I've had to buy things during retrogrades. Life doesn't stop just because of Mercury's position in the sky. But what we have to do in a retrograde is be very discerning and very careful. So get a second set of eyes. Um, have someone else, like, and that can be a lawyer, that can be a friend, that can just be you talking out loud to someone. Make sure that you are checking assumptions and looking at things with a clear set of eyes. Like even when I was looking at this place, I was so wanting to get out of the construction area that I was in that I missed some things like the cracks in the ceiling. Um, there were some here and there. So thankfully, my third eye showed me stuff that my actual eyes didn't see. Uh, but by that time, I'd already signed a contract. So you have to kind of it helps if you have someone that's unattached to a situation to help you double check so that you're not getting it later and then having to deal with it. Um, so that would be my advice. If you have to make a decision, get a friend, get a lawyer, get someone you trust. And if they say something you don't want to hear, like, I don't know about that. Or did you see this or how? Listen to that because that's going to save you time in the long run. OK, you can still make decisions. You can still make something amazing happen. But check everything. You know, what is it? Dot your I's, cross your T's. But I would also say if you're looking at buying something, open all the doors and take it for a test drive and things like that. Make sure that this is something that's really um, going to be the right match for you. OK, uh, so whoever's asking if this is live. Yes, this is live. Of course it is. Um, so let's take a look at the next piece here. Seizing the moment. OK, here's what I love about the praying mantis. Um, basically, they lie in wait and they get what they want. Um, they choose the right time. They don't act prematurely. This is so important. Sometimes we want to rush to the finish line. I could have put the hanged man reverse on this one, too. Um, it's, it's a combination of don't rush it, but also when the time is right, don't delay. So you want to find that perfect balance between waiting and then going in and getting what you need. Um, there's windows of opportunity, which is why I chose this particular two of wands. Um, this is your chance to really act upon an amazing window of opportunity. So when it happens, um, act. Timing is everything. All right. So uh, definitely pay attention to the signs. Don't don't second guess yourself and don't rush yourself. And that's going to help you out. The element of surprise is really um, an amazing thing. Actually, it can it can work in your favor. So let's say you are trying to <laughs> throw a birthday party for someone and you want it to be a surprise. There is seven of swords can be fun because it can be like, you didn't think I could get you on this one, but I did. But it's a positive way, like showing someone that you care, throwing that kind of a party or, or giving them some sort of a surprise present. Proposing sometimes can be like that, too. Um, but seven of swords is seven of swords. So um, sometimes this means that someone else might be trying to take advantage of a moment. Um, steal the spotlight or also do something and get away with it so that you can't change it so that you want what I really want you to do is this final bullet here slow down long enough to prepare for what you need to do to listen to what's and by listening I also mean observe what's going on around you and then once you've kind of pulled all of that together then you can act then you know what to do 
Um, so timing is key and you can use the element of surprise, but someone might be trying to surprise you. So tune in, use your third eye <laughs> and really make sure that you're ready for that. Okay. And finally, we're going to look here a little bit at self-confidence and posture. So one of the tools in the arsenal of the praying mantis is its ability to sometimes use its height and, um, and pull out its kind of scary looking claws to scare away a potential predator. Um, and it's sort of like a defensive thing. So you can use nonverbal language to help you uh, basically accentuate a message. It doesn't have to be this exaggerated thing that we're talking about with the mantis. It can also be a smile when you're talking to someone to show that you are open, that you are receptive, that you are warm. It can be good eye contact saying, I'm here for you, I'm listening. It can also be the way in which you use your, your, your throat chakra. Is your voice really you know, quiet or is it you know, confident and projecting and can people really get behind it? So we want to use all of the tools in your arsenal to make, basically take that communication and send it through uh, into the atmosphere. Today's uh, single card pull was the Eight of Wands, so I still have rockets kind of on my head, and that's, that's what's gonna kind of send it out and be the, the fuel that really gets your message out there. I chose the, the uh, Four and the Five of Pentacles because with the Four, we see someone pulling inward, and it is a sort of contraction of energy. So, you know, swallowing your words, kind of hunching over, we don't wanna do that. And then the Five of Pentacles has to usually do with a past event that makes us feel uncertain. Can I do this? Will it be okay? How am I going to do this? All of those things could be coming through. So uh, remember to value your, yourself and to make sure that your time and energy is also valued, that all of that output that you're uh, investing in things around you is also then returned to you in either love, support, resources, or all of the above, okay? And I believe that is everything for this lovely totem. Um, but some really cool things with this, basically the, the thing that I love the most is that, that you have the ability to uh, use timing, use the element of surprise, um, and also see things from a different angle. There's, it's a very good totem overall. Um, one last thing, and I didn't have a chance to put this into the slides, but I remembered it. Um, so a lot of times this, is, this particular insect is used as a natural sort of way to get rid of unwanted pests, but it also eats beneficial insects like bees and ladybugs and things like that. And it just eats everything. <laughs> so one thing that we want to avoid with the praying mantis is excess. So like the uh, nine of cups, for instance, or the seven of pentacles, um, overextending or overindulging. That's one cautionary note for this that just came to me as we're talking and I wanted to make sure that I highlighted it. And we'll see what comes through in the cards as we take a look at everything now. So that brings us into the next portion. So if you just joined Perfect Timing, um, we're going to be taking a look at the Celtic Cross. And again, I'm reading for October, but we're looking at this in September. So it's going to span about six to eight weeks, giving you plenty of time to prepare, to course correct, and to make the most out of this. Okay, let's go ahead, zoom in on the table here so you can see everything. I'm going to pre-select the deck just because um, I feel connected to this one this morning. And we're going to see what kind of energy this brings through. So let's get in a little bit closer and give it a good shuffle. Um, as always, you can use this for your sun, your rising, and your moon sign. If you stick around until the latter portion, I actually will take a look at that um, in a little bit more detail for you. And if you happen to know other aspects of your chart, it's going to also help you out with that, like Venus or any of your um, anything else of that nature. You'd be able to use it as well. Okay, so let's see what's coming through for Gemini for the next six to eight weeks. How's everyone doing today? All right, let's zoom out just a smidge. There we go, perfect, okay.
right, let's take a look at everything. We see some changes on the horizon, which is great. Um, and most of the energy here is pretty, pretty good, actually. Okay, let's start with your catalyst card. We have the flame card. The flame is in reverse. So some of you may be trying to find, locate, or reignite that flame within. And so this could be a feeling of uh, lacking inspiration, um, lacking the sort of what I like to call vitality when something kind of gets you excited about getting up in the morning. So maybe there has been something where you, um, you've been working too hard, burning the candles at, uh, at both ends, and you just sort of think to yourself, why am I doing this? And it's a good question, by the way, when, when that happens. Um, if we sometimes just end up on these paths where we keep walking and going and going, um, that little question is so important because it, it could be telling you there's an opportunity just here or just here, that four of cups energy that we talked about earlier, and it wants to kind of make sure that you don't miss it. So it's not you being ungrateful. It's not you, um, you know, sort of like not appreciating the moment. Sometimes it's an awakening, like there's, there's something more that wants to come through. If you put anything off to the side, maybe you started a family, maybe you had to finish something like a you know school or something like that, but now you know what you want to focus on. This is really saying, once I can connect to that inspiration, then everything starts to light up in my life. It's almost as if you find the, uh, the lantern from the hermit, right? Everything is illuminated. And we have the uh, basically the second chakra coming through here, central awakening. And our creative center comes through in that second chakra. And so how we express ourselves, uh, what we want to create, how we want to sort of be in our lives. That's, that's what's kind of coming through for you this month. And there's, there's this inner stirring. It could come through in dreams. It could be a persistent thought. You could look at someone and it could also come through in a way that initially you may feel bad about, but don't. It's just an awakening. It could be jealousy. You look at someone and you think, gosh, I wish I had that. And all that is, is the ignition, the ignition of a spark saying, well, why, why shouldn't I? Why can't I create that? Let's do that. So the way you take jealousy and turn it into a positive is it becomes motivation. Um, I take jealousy and make it admiration instead. I admire that trait. Um, I'm inspired by the, the progress and the accomplishment. What can I do to create or to spark that possibility within? Love can always, you can usually trace things back to love in some way. <laughs> and so sometimes when we feel a lower frequency of, of love, uh, possessive energy or a jealous energy, it usually is just saying, I need to make something more within myself so I don't feel like I have to hold on to this or I have to feel bad that someone else has something that I don't have. Let's just build. Let's just create. So there's a stirring within you. And this month, do something cool with that. Get inspired. That's the first message. Okay. Looking at the central cards here, let's see what's going on. The very center card um, is fantastic, actually. Some of you might be um, entering into a new relationship, starting a family, or thinking about doing one or both, because your center card is the Ten of Cups. Let's do one card at a time. Um, so with the Ten of Cups, we see friends, we see family, we see that really uh, beautiful connection I think that we all seek. Nobody really wants to um, not have connections in their lives. Ten of Cups can be marriage, but it can also be best friends. It's basically someone that has your back. Um, chosen family is what I like to look at this as. You get older, basically. Um, I'm at a point in my life where a lot of people have transitioned. Uh, and so now it's more about the friends that I have. And so I try to really keep those connections. College friends, work, former coworkers, former neighbors, all these people that you kind of uh, have these really close bonds with, it's sort of... Like, well, this is what matters now because we, we go into our lives in a certain point where we move beyond just the blood relatives. So spend some time this month really enriching those relationships and building them a little bit more. You may also feel inspired to do more with community, um, school, children. Uh, maybe you want to give back uh, and uh, it could be philanthropic or whatever, but definitely connecting with people that you love, creating a family, even if you don't have that sort of blood family, we're talking about chosen family. That's the central theme. If you're looking for love, this is a good month for that as well, because you've got it right in the center. Okay. Right on top of this, we have the Empress card fully showing the ability to bring things into fruition here with the, the pregnancy symbol here. So whether you, um, 
it, it doesn't matter whether you identify as male or female, we all connect to divine feminine energy. We live on the earth, which is a divine feminine energy. And that's why I love the way this is illustrated. Um, we also see the moon there. So they picked a couple of really beautiful energies for um, divine feminine. What does that mean for you? It means you, you might have a chance to kind of birth a couple of things this month. So you could work on yourself and create a change from within. You could also work on an external project and see movement there. And it's a symbiotic relationship because the sun, sorry, the moon and the earth are very symbiotic. Um, what the moon did for the earth, because I've studied it as a totem before, it slowed down the rotation, um, which was key to giving us manageable seasons and days that were manageable as well so that a day didn't last 30 years or something. Like there are some planets out there where days are very long, years are even longer. So we got this perfect tilt, this perfect spin, this perfect speed, and the moon is a big part of the stabilization. It also helps control the ocean tides. Um, without it, we'd have a very weak ocean tide because the sun is very far away in comparison to the moon. So it's created movement on the planet, stability on the planet, and it's beautiful to look at too, right? Um, so symbiotic relationships, that's actually what we're seeing with these two. Um, so this is relationships, family, friends, the community. And now we see something symbiotic where it, one isn't necessary, necessarily better or worse, but um, the combination of the two makes something stronger. Partnerships. So, but this is very elevated partnerships. This isn't sort of a lusty combination of things. This is saying we really have something where if I work with this person on something or even just in my life, life partnerships, I will be better. It, this is adding to me and I'm, I'm adding to that and we're helping one another. So um, the moon ostensibly, you could just argue without the, uh, without the earth, it would just be floating as a, a derelict satellite. So it, the uh, earth gives it stability and gives it a purpose, right? Um, so everything has its rhyme and it has its reason. And this month, it's really about getting organized. Some of you may be um, pregnant. Some of you might be launching or announcing something this month too. It's a good time. I like what I see. We have that launch and the, oops, sorry. <laughs> and then we have this really great energy right here coming through saying, we're going to make this happen. We're going to bring it together. It's going to be okay. So all of that portends good stuff. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at your deep past and see what messages are coming through with respect to that. So we have the nine of wands in reverse for the deep past. And this is basically saying that you know you're close to accomplishing what you want. There could be a little bit of motivation that could be lacking right now because, again, it's just this feeling of how much further do I have to go? As a child, I'm sure you remember asking a parent or uh, maybe a teacher, are we there yet? When will this be done? Is it Christmas yet? Whatever it is, is it Hanukkah? When am I going to get my present? When is this going to happen? Because as a kid, we don't have the same concept of time. We want it now. <laughs> as an adult, sometimes we want to slow things down and you think, how can, how can this birthday, can I be turning that age? Why isn't it slowing down? It's speeding up. So um, for you, the same message kind of what I just said is the powerful piece. When you're not fixated on the end point or the time, which is why I take my watch off for the readings usually, sometimes I forget. Um, but when you're not fixated on the time, things go fast and things happen in the appropriate time usually. There are times where we have to respect things like doctor's appointments and whatnot, but when I'm talking about developmental pieces in your life or manifestation of something, that's when we use cosmic time, not the spinning of the earth. And that'll help you out. Just focus on doing the right thing and then focus on something else because that law of detachment will actually pull it to you faster. Okay. And that's the main thing that I'm getting with this. Nine of Wands also reminds you um, to focus on general health when we're looking at the head. It can be um, specifically, it's usually like migraines because we'll normally see a band aid on this person's head. So it can be headaches, migraines, uh, lack of focus or clarity or concentration. Uh, and a lot of that is just from overworking or pushing too hard or because people have you've, you've just gotten out of like a really difficult conversation or negotiation. So a little bit of a reset is going to be necessary to help you find your Zen again, find your peace again. OK. Ultimately, it's good. We also I love that we see the the lot, the light coming out of this particular wand. So that's why it's so important for you to find your passion. Right. That's going to help you through this. All right. 
Lots of wands this week as I've been reading for all of the daily reads. I think we had like what, the five of wands, the queen of wands, the five of wands, and the eight of wands. And now we have a lot of them here as I'm reading for you. Um, we have king of wands coming through in recent past. I love the boldness in this particular card. Um, it's basically saying anything you set your mind to, you can do. People are reading the body language. Um, I would say, you know, lions as well have that ability to kind of posture themselves, especially the male lion saying like, you know, pay attention to me. So we're, we're often taught as children and in different societies to not, you don't want to be boastful. You don't want to sort of stand out too much. You want to just blend in. There may be certain things this month, particularly when it comes to leadership, where it's important to exude confidence and push out just a little bit more than you normally would when it comes to those sorts of things. So I, I'm encouraging you to be bold this month, not in, a, not in a way where you're bragging, not in a way where it's overwhelming. But when it comes to saying this is how we should do it or I feel very good about this and then there's this the sense that other people will pick up on it because they believe you. They're like, yeah, I can tell. You really do believe that. You really do feel good about this, don't you? Um, it's a boss card. It's the ultimate boss card. So if there's anything that you're trying to accomplish, this is saying you absolutely can do this. Um, get behind it 100% and uh, you should take ownership on this as well. This isn't a time to be sort of casual or, you know, maybe, maybe not like, really get behind something and others will as well in your crowning position we have the ace of cups and its reverse so the one area of sensitivity so far could be just sort of how much emotional stuff that you've been through this is saying you know i need some time off i need some time to channel this into something productive so if you've been really stressed if you've been really busy and you're just feeling the sense of frustration make sure that you do something to take care of that um, vent and, and blow off some steam a little bit. And that can be through um, spending time with friends, watching TV, doing something creative or artistic, whatever it is that you need to do to connect and open up your heart a little bit and do some healing there, by all means do that. If there is a relationship that came into your, um, your, your life this month, it could be overwhelming. The timing is kind of interesting. I'm looking at what's going on. You're, you're distracted. There's a lot of energy going on and this person could be occupying a lot of time in your head. So when we look at love and relationships a little bit later, let's see how we can ground it. Ultimately, the, um, the Empress card is coming through just like a Queen of Pentacles would. And, and she's saying, find your, your even footing uh, and make sure that you haven't lost track of you in whatever is going on right now. Okay. As we look at the near future, we have the Four of Pentacles. Interesting that I highlighted that um, because I was talking about your potential is actually the night, which is great, or your outcome, I should say. Um, the potential is to change this because we have the tower and this is what's happening. So we're going to change this to get that, which is really, really good. So this is a card of fear, of limitation, of holding on to things. So beautiful illustration here. We see the woman holding on to her purse, holding it tightly towards her heart. Um, I think that this is easier to understand than a big coin around your heart. She's like, all my stuff is here. I don't want to lose it. It's valuable. I don't want to, I don't want to share it with you. There's a possessive energy. There is a constricting energy and there is a limiting energy. So the number one thing to avoid this month are limiting thoughts. Those are also connected to another card that we wouldn't want to see, which is the devil, which is trying to hold you in place. So what you're going to do is open up and say, I'm not afraid to release something in my life. Um, a belonging, a thought process, um, an old job or an old way of being, because if I let this go, ultimately I'm creating space, space in which I can plant new seeds that could be more fruitful because the four of pentacles is basically not enough. It's not even break even five of pentacles is break even four of pentacles is either thrifty to a fault <laughs> or it's holding on to something that doesn't suit you and then that's actually holding you back from opportunities so we're going to let go of that and, and it can be a fear like i'm not going to have enough so release that as well what we're going to do instead is if there is a lack in your life let's say you're at a, a job and there's not enough help and there's too much to do and the deadline's not realistic that's when you communicate and you can do it in different ways sometimes a boss doesn't want to hear that they need to hire someone or that you can't do it. What you can say is, I can do this. Um, I need help with this. Or this is what's possible today. Uh, is that the priority that you want? It's a different way of saying, I can't do that. 
it's a proactive way. And so that's how I used to manage at one of my first jobs. I would come to work early, at least half an hour early. I would sit down and look at everything that I did the day before and everything that I needed to do today. And I would say, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm going to do. Please let me know if you want me to switch around my schedule for today. So when my boss came in, bosses, I had a couple, they would look at that and they would say, oh yeah, this, this is new, this, and, and uh, you can forget that, we'll give this to someone else. So I let them know what I needed help with, but not in a way that was sort of, I still empowered them to do their job, um, but I made it easier for them. And I made it clear that this was how much could be done in a day. So sometimes you can have that frankness and that openness, but um, if you can't, then do what you can and then ask for some help. Um, in the, and I think it's important though to get something on record, which is that this isn't, this isn't feasible. Now, if you've been working too much for anybody, this could be in a partnership or a job, and you're just not getting your fair share, and this can be what happens with the Four of Pentacles, it's time to negotiate. Um, time to, um, you know, sometimes what, what can be really effective is taking a vacation. <laughs> if you do way too much, take the vacation that you have saved up if you have time and then let things fall apart a little bit while you're gone and then come back. And when they're like, we're so happy to see you say, um, great, by the way, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, future growth and, you know, get yourself in a position where they need you and where you're showing your worth and sometimes subtracting your presence from wherever you're at can help them see just how just how essential you are. So there's a lot of different negotiation techniques that you can use, um, but I think for some of you it's time to speak up and it's time to have the other person step in and do a little more. In a relationship, this is just saying, I, I can't give more than I have. And maybe you've been in that 60-40 split for too long and now it's time to, to get it more um, even, okay? There's a lot you can do with this especially with its position here, and especially since everything else is really pulling you towards the Knight of Pentacles, which is a favorable sort of jump from this. All right, we talked about this in my single card pulls this, this week, um, one of my shorts, and it was also reversed, which is, I, I believe it was reversed. It's very similar. So the Five of Wands, as I said earlier, it's a card where you can get a lot done. Let's, let's actually first say that. This is a card where work needs to get done, work can get done, but it's not being done very effectively or efficiently. A lot of times what happens with the Five of Wands is people end up talking over each other. Um, they end up competing, and it's not necessarily healthy competition. They're just sort of trying to show off or get people's attention. And when that happens, there is an encouragement to slow down for a moment and try to lift one another up a little bit. Because what we see happening in here is that um, sometimes, you know, People are just pushing against one another to try to, uh, again, protect. It can be a, a sort of a territorial thing, like this is mine. I don't want to share it with you. Um, and if it's not a territorial thing, it can also be a moment where um, people are just not really focusing. So working for the sake of working, but not necessarily productive. So work smarter, not harder. Uh, and if you can get something done quicker, let someone know and then focus on something else. One of the number one reasons that I got tired of working in a traditional kind of nine to five job or a corporate job is because let's say that you were really good at your job and you could get everything done by three o'clock. You would still have to stay until six. So there would be three more hours that you would have to invent work um, or that you wouldn't be able to then maybe just decompress or get inspired and watch something else. There were very predetermined ways that you had to be productive. Um, and so this is an example of that. Just saying like, just because you're working, it doesn't mean there, there's sometimes there's diminishing returns. So maybe you need a break. Maybe you need to break up the routine. Maybe you need a day off, maybe work fewer hours, but do more in those hours. And if you're a company or if you're overseeing people, even learning to a degree, there has to be different levels on different days. We can't always just work in a calendar. That's not how the brain works and that's not necessarily how productivity happens. So if you have the ability to affect, control, or structure your day, break it up a little bit, okay? And that's gonna help you quite a bit. All right, focusing now on what's going on around you. Some distraction. Um, some of you, again, could be thinking of someone that you love. You could be thinking about something you'd rather be doing or creating in your life. Um, your mind is elsewhere, as we see with the Seven of Cups. Uh, this is a good card for brainstorming, ideation, getting inspired. It can also say, I'm not, I'm not focusing anymore on this. This isn't my main 
inspiration. I want to be over there. I want to be doing this. And I don't understand why I'm doing this. So that can also be the awakening, the spark that I talked about earlier, which is um, I now am drawn here. I am now called to this. And now I'm going to answer that call. Ultimately, this card begs for a decision. Seven of Cups reverse is saying we're going to let go of some of some of the stuff that's been kind of like floating around. And we're going to really take this and this and make that the central focus. So do less, do it better, focus your intentions, focus your energy, and you're going to get excited as you do that. Okay. Uh, one last thing is multitasking, but too much multitasking. Um, so if there's something important that you do and what my guides are showing me is headphones. So I know a lot of you in a busy office or sometimes you need the headphones to drown out the coworkers if you're in an open office space, which I don't know why they're doing that in COVID anymore. But um, if, you, if you're unfortunately in an open office space, sometimes you have to do that. But um, if you're overstimulating yourself with coffee, music, or other things, take down the stimulation a bit and, and focus a little bit more because there's too much. It's actually interfering with the brain. Even if you think I can listen to music and write this note, no, maybe white noise, maybe the sound of the forest or something, but you need to kind of tune it down a little bit so that you can, um, you'll get through the task faster. And that's what I'm getting as distraction. You could be in an office where you're listening to other people's conversations too much too. And you could just say, can you keep it down? I'm trying to focus on this or go to another room. Something's taking you out of your Zen a little bit. All right, here's the big opportunity change. Um, change is not necessarily bad. In fact, given the fact that we have the Knight of Pentacles in the outcome, I would say it's good for you this month. So the main thing for you is um, how and where do I want to create change in my life? Because it's really not a question of if, it's, it's basically when, um, how and when. And I think for some of you, it can be a decision to go down a different path. We have the Knight of Pentacles here, which can basically say, I want to invest time and energy in this. I want to take a little bit of a left turn or a right turn. Whenever I see a knight reverse, it's a pause. When we look at pentacles, it's a pause in investment. Um, uh, wands would be like thoughts. Cups could be relationships. Uh, swords could be your communication. But we're looking at what you're doing, doing in your life, doing for a living, doing with your money and your resources. Something in one of those or all of those categories needs to be shuffled around a little bit. So the knight is pausing for a second and saying, I've been going this way, but I'm going to think about going this way or this way. Taking a little bit of a turn, maybe 90 degrees, maybe 180 like the Manted. And it's basically going to um, help you in the long run because you're going to be following your heart. You're going to be much more engaged and you're really going to start to feel this sense of opening happening for you. Okay. And yes, someone mentioned that there are butterflies on this um, tower card. Not only that, but we actually see that the squirrel is prepared. We see those acorns, right? Right to the side here. So the squirrel is saved up for this change. The butterflies are saying it's positive change. And he's not really running. He's looking and thinking, what is this? What's happening? What do I want to do? And it's a very aware tower. <laughs> so um, going with the flow of energy is important. When you fight it, that's typically when you regret it. So if changes are happening, acknowledge those changes and then figure out what's coming next for you. All right. We're going to move next into the um, expanded forecast here. And when I expand the forecast, I'm going to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. Let me grab um, one of my teas that I brewed in the kitchen, and then I'll come back and look at this for you. In the meantime, I'm going to put, the, um, put this down for a second. So if you wanted to see any of the uh, sort of layout, you can see that. I'll be right back. All right, thank you for giving me a moment. I do appreciate that. Okay, we're gonna begin with your health card. And uh, I'll talk about the disclaimer in just a second, but we have the stag spirit here. Take the lead. And what a nice connection this one is to the uh, king of wands here, right? So we have the ultimate boss card, and now we have another boss card coming through. I also like this month how there's a very nice combination of divine masculine and feminine. So we have in this card, you know, I, I've mentioned two totems here that are divine feminine plus the empress. And now we have a couple of divine masculine cards. So balance is very, very important <laughs> as we're looking at all of this. 
I'm gonna help us take a look at the energy available to you this month. You are always in the driver's seat when it comes to your health, and if there's anything going on in your mind or in your body and you need help, you should work with a professional. We're just looking at energetic opportunities and how to be healthy with those types of choices. Okay, stag spirit. Of course, um, intuitive development is a piece of this. In any sort of druid type decks or nature decks, when we see really big horns, um, it's about tuning in to the divine. Big messages, big ideas could be coming through to you this month. And the encouragement with this is to listen and act upon those. Um, particularly if there's a big change that you feel like it's going to be make you happier, make you healthier, this card definitely connects with that. And then leadership, when it comes to your health, take the lead and say, doctor, I want to talk about this, or trainer, I need help with this, um, or teacher, let me learn more about this. Um, ask questions. Don't just let someone prescribe or dictate. Say, wait, I need more about this, or I need to understand this, or I'm not comfortable with this. So taking a very active and a very vocal role in your health is always the right thing, actually, because there's some things that you shouldn't do it if it doesn't feel right, basically. Looking at the cards themselves, let's see what additional messages are coming through with respect to health. So the Four of Pentacles has to do with stress and how you're holding it. A lot of times it can affect um, shoulder, uh, I would even say just sort of like there can be tension around the chest, breathing may not be what it needs to be. Ultimately, we don't want to close the heart space because it can affect long term our heart health. Stress always does. So you want to do some exercises if, if you happen to practice yoga, um, do some exercises that help you open up your heart and really do some sort of chest opening um, or um, exercises. Anything where you're opening your lungs up and really kind of like breaking through any of the, of the blockages there as well is going to be important. Um, so deep breathing, exercising, and yoga where the heart is being activated is important. Uh, let's see what else is coming through here with this. Um, the tower, it's interesting I mentioned balance, can also indicate an imbalance in your life and a necessary change that needs to happen. This can be any sort of imbalance. It could be chemical, it could be work-life balance, it could be situational, like I don't like where I'm working or living or who I'm living with. And so this change brings a beneficial uh, sort of energy to your life because then we have the Knight of Pentacles here, which is healthier, better, better direction, more energy coming in because of that shift that you make in your life. So um, all across the board looking much better for any sort of um, potential shift that you make. Um, so the opportunity is to make a change. The outcome is good. And you might, you might be holding yourself back. Someone else might be holding, your, holding you back from making that change. And this is saying, let's release that. Um, let me see what else is coming through here. A lack of focus, a little bit of mental fog. So this could be for some of you, just distraction. It could also be an indication that, um, you know, if there's something else going on, like memory issues or it's consistent, then that's something you want to talk to the doctor about. Most of you, it feels like it's just a focus thing. Okay. Let me see if there's anything else that I want to look at here that is important. Uh, I am getting, again, migraines or headaches. So make sure you're eating, um, I'm sorry, getting enough sleep and not drinking too much caffeine. Drinking enough water can also cause that sort of an issue. Um, by the way, I'm going to have to walk my dog in a second because I see him tapping around. So I'll do that uh, as soon as we get through health. Speaking about health, sometimes Apollo needs an extra walk and today he does. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Drinking enough water, not drinking um, excess caffeine or excess alcohol is going to be important as well. And he's coming in to say, Dad, you got to take care of me. So we're going to do a little walk here with Apollo. I think that's everything that we need to look at. One last thing is inflammation. Um, so if there's any inflammation in your uh, joints or anything of that nature, make sure that you take care of that as well. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. When I come back on, um, on replay, I should be able to trim that out. I will see if I can. But uh, what can you do when you have a pet? You have to listen to them. Um, because they don't understand. It's so interesting. We were talking a little bit earlier about timelines. And um, when, you, when you're not paying attention to something, it happens. With dogs, they very much are eternally a child. It's like, I need to go now. I don't care if you have 30 more minutes. <laughs> we're going to do this now. So anyway, Apollo's fine. He's chilling out and a uh, happy little puppy. Uh, one thing that I will say, and it teaches you to be more intuitive if you are a parent or a pet owner, when 
especially like with a child, before they develop language skills, you learn the difference between the different cries, right? Or the different looks. Same thing with the dog. He, I've only, only once, knock on wood, um, the first day that I had him, because I didn't know the signs yet, that was the only time he ever had an accident in the house. Um, so from 2017 until today, he's never made um, an accident again, as long as I listen to cues. So I will take a break, even when I have a bunch of people watching, because you have to. Um, so thank you, everyone. All right, let's reconnect and refocus. So we were just talking about health, kind of timely that Apollo needed to take a break then. So listen to your health. That was one thing that I remember when I had my regular job that was frowned upon. Um, taking you know, a day off, uh, taking necessary breaks. Um, it was sort of like if you left, you, you were afraid that you would miss out on something um, or you know, that your work or your job would go to somebody else. So this is a, a sort of nice indication, even just as we're going through something, you always, always need to slow down and take care of what's important. All right, that was the message for health. Let's move on to wealth. As we look at the wealth card for today, um, we have the frog. So this is, uh, this is Los Angeles getting ready for rain because we're going to get it this weekend. Actually, we got some today as well. Um, with wealth, this is an interesting card because the frog, first of all, has the ability to leapfrog to jump into something. So there's a little bit of the energy of the fool when I see the frog. To take a jump, to take a leap, and to actually land on your feet or be okay no matter what. A frog is going to thrive in a rainy or not so great situation. So some of you might be finding your way through a situation where you wish it was a little clearer, you wish there was a little bit more solid ground, but what I see with the frog is the ability to have a thick skin, to be able to get through it, and to be able to get what you need. And again, it's sort of hopping from one thing to another, and you'll just have to sort of focus on that. Welcome back, Apollo. He's happy now. Um, the other thing here is there could be some stagnation in your work career. Um, or in your where you're putting your time and energy if you're retired or if you're a student There's also maybe just some stagnation in general. What do I mean by stagnation? I mean that whatever you're doing there may not be this sort of feeling of uh, Fulfillment it's sort of like what am I doing? I'm, I'm spinning my wheels um, and like any of you that have ever had a car that hits mud uh, like you, you go into the mud or the dirt if you keep spinning you go deeper and sometimes that's not actually That's the five of wands that we talked about so for some of you, you're just, you're just moving quickly, but not moving anywhere. And this is a chance for you to slow down and figure out, why am I doing this? Is it because I needed to prove something to myself, to my family? Is it because I'm afraid of what might happen if I release this? Is it a fear of like age? If I put myself out there that people will look at my age, whether it's youth or um, I'm at the other end of the spectrum and people are looking and thinking they want someone younger. Uh, whatever it is, release it because you're going to find what you're looking for. You just have to sort of let go of your own preconception um, or the own, your own fear that you happen to have, right? Um, let's see. What else can I talk about for this? And now let's take a look at the specific cards here and we'll connect it back with that. Okay, so talking about things that are going on, I do think some of you are right at that precipice or that nexus of saying, I want to change in my career. I want to change in my life. I want to do something different than is expected from me. And in order to do that, um, I need to change my, my degree. If you're a student, I have to change my job. I have to change people's minds around me because you don't really have to do the latter. You just have to be solid with it. One thing that I learned when I was going through that sort of career shift the most important thing was when I told people I wanted to do it that um, I believed myself and that later that I didn't make any sort of excuses for the type of work that I'd chosen, whether I want to identify, because I can identify as a lot of things. I'm a YouTube content creator. If I'm talking to someone from my old path, um, if people are spiritually attuned, I would say I'm also an intuitive, a light worker. Um, and, you know, and I'm here to kind of have intelligent conversations about spirituality. So it depends who I'm talking to, how I frame it, but I don't make apologies no matter what. And even if somebody's asking, well, what kind of content do you do? I would say um, intuitive. I, I read with tarot cards. I talk about metaphysics and development of your own sort of abilities. And I have a great time and say it like that. And they'll probably say, cool, what's your channel? Um, and so if you can be very okay about your path, whether you own your own business or whether you are a life coach or whether you do something really way out in left field that people don't understand, as long as you like it, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters at the end of the day and at the end of your journey on this planet. 
isn't it always telling when someone says, well, that's okay. I didn't say it wasn't. It's interesting that you needed to sort of validate it. Um, it's better to say, well, that's cool. Tell me more. If someone says that's okay, that means they're probably holding on to some shred of disbelief or it surprised them or they're trying to overcome their own sort of like not being okay with it. Just say, yeah, I know. I love it. Um, don't even take the bait on that one. Just say, yeah, it's really great. Um, what's going on? Another thing that I would do is then just shoot it back to them and say what's going on. Um, but the change is necessary. Own the change. Be the change. Don't apologize for the change. It's going to be fine. In fact, you're going to be probably more successful, more productive, more engaged when you do whatever shift it is that you need to do. You don't have to change their mind. So the Seven of Cups is other people's own. Sometimes they just want to know. Um, even if someone like when, when, when I used to sort of do art for clients, um, like design work and things like that, sometimes they just ask questions because they wanted to see if you believed in what you were presenting. Uh, and that's a big that's a big piece for anybody that's an artist. If you believe in your work, someone then will be willing to say, sure, then let's do it. But they really need to feel that you believe because they don't know. Um, so <laughs> know yourself, know your path. That's going to help you out so much. Yes, you can get more. Yes, someone might be trying to get more from you than they should. So in a, in a contract negotiation, fight for a little bit more. Um, you, you have a really good chance of getting it. If you're selling something, ask for a little bit more or don't sell just yet because it looks like it might be going for too little. Um, negotiate and get a little bit more. Um, that's the important thing. There's some instability in how this is all going to shake down. Um, it could benefit you again. You could, you could benefit from someone walking away from something. Um, and that could then you could pick it up and kind of fix it. But otherwise, I would say hold a little bit, especially with the retrograde. Um, if you don't have to make that big jump, I would say plan on it, research it, get all the sort of ducks in a row. And then at the begin, the middle of next month would be a good time. You can start to look at it again after the retrograde and then sign the contract, make the deal. You can be busy right now. That's kind of what I'm doing. Um, someone was mentioning, I'm glad you like what I've done here. It's kind of like a mini set, but I have to find an office because I can't trust this environment. So I'm looking for an office and hopefully um, I can find something. So next month I have a place to go in case the rain comes down and starts leaking in this place. So, um, so I'm preparing in retrograde to make a move for the office. Um, so you have to sometimes just look a little bit ahead and um, and go with the energy because like with me too i can just see change is happening whether i like it or not right so that's the important thing there okay um let's see if there's anything else could be a merger in some of the companies that you're working at could be a um, takeover a change of the guard someone new coming in better possibly um there's some uh there's a need to improve general financial health and looking at your finances overall i think that's key too Taking ownership, taking power, taking accountability. We have a king and a queen right at the center. So make sure that you're at the negotiation table for anything important in your life. You've worked hard to get where you're at. Okay. And take the leap of faith. Let's move on to your relationships here. Uh, love. <laughs> where you are is where it's at. So you've set up this moment in time for a reason. There's no accidents. Um, just things that you've called into existence, um, synchronicities. Stay until you are divinely moved. Good message there. Um, I'm going to have to get my glasses here in just a second because I realized I left those in the other room, but I'll do it after we talk about this. All right, so uh, for this, I would say before you jump out of the relationship, before you jump in a relationship, if you're single, be single and happy for a second. Um, if you're ready to get out of something, then really figure out how you got into it before you jump out of it and before you jump into something else. And um, if you're happy, then you've built this and you should enjoy it and you're not missing anything. The message here is you're exactly where you need to be. So stay where you are for a second. I'm going to grab my glasses and then we're going to talk about three different things here. Those in a relationship, looking for a relationship and single and happy. All right, for those in a relationship, well, we actually have a nice king and queen card here set up, which is good. And I like what I see at the center, the 10 of cups. So far, so good. 
This is showing that it was built on love. It was built on a little bit of hard work too with the nine of wands. So it ha hasn't always been easy, um, but what you've built is something good. Um, but what I'm seeing here is a little bit of lack when it comes to maybe one partner is going through something intense. The tower doesn't always have to be um, because of something that you're not doing. This could be a big life change, loss of a loved one, loss of money, health change, something that might have been out of their control because the tower often is. It's the universe stepping in and just making something happen and we have to deal with it. So your partner may be dealing with that. They may not be able to give you as much. Vice versa, you may be dealing with something big and you can't invest as much. What's happening here then is there's a little bit of a deficit when it comes to give and take. That explains the Ace of Cups in reverse. There's some work that needs to be done in the relationship to balance it. There's some questions, some, you know, some, some sort of energy that needs to be exchanged just sort of like in thoughts. Where, where do you stand? What's going on? How can I help you? Um, if you guys work on that, we actually have a card that shows commitment and maybe a different direction, but it, it's still a good card, the Knight of Pentacles here. Um, so this is saying you've been holding back. This is investing a little bit more and you can find a balance from the two of these. So I think it can be solved if there's any challenges. If things are happy, you might be looking at selling something, making some money, moving, because we can see like a liquidation of assets for a profit. Um, you can get more from walking away for, or selling something rather. Um, and that's a good thing too. Um, some of you are doing some soul searching and there's a different trajectory that you want to take. So maybe, th maybe everything's peachy with the relationship, but there's this big shift and you say, I want to do this. Are you on board? Do you want to take this next leap with me. And if it is a great partnership, then I don't see any reasons why you can't. Um, the tower is just saying, make sure that whatever you walk away from, you're okay with that, that you're taking care of yourself and that you're not cutting yourself um, short when it comes to your necessary resources. Um, so it looks actually pretty manageable when I'm looking at this. One, one final note, and then we're going to look at those that are uh, seeking a relationship. But I would say some of you may be starting a family. That is absolutely tower energy. So whether you're having a baby or adopting a dog, it's pretty close, especially if it's a puppy. Um, it's going to make a big change in your life. And for some of you that are birthing something different, let's say it's letting go of something that you've worked on for a long time. Maybe you were taking night classes to get a degree um, in nursing or engineering or whatever. All of a sudden you've got it. Now it's this sort of like Anytime you graduate, you're thrown into this soup of now what do I do? You're going to be fine, but there is this new you and now you can kind of reconnect with one another. So lots of changes, nothing, nothing crazy that I see here. Um, it's all manageable. So uh, I wish you luck with them. If you decide to move and go your own way, it's going to be all right too, because this is still positive. So you just have to decide what you want. That's the key thing here. All right. Focusing on if you're looking for love, if you're looking for love, the dust needs to settle. This card is a rebound card. So if you're just out of a relationship, again, what we just saw here, where you are is where you need to be or where it's at. Um, that's what this is saying. Take a moment and enjoy just being free and focus on getting your financial house in order. Focus on uh, self-confidence and self-worth before you put yourself back out there. Focus on your emotional stability and any sort of healing that needs to happen in the heart space. You're going to pull in a really great partner once you've done that because we already see it in your energy and we're looking a little bit ahead. So this recent past for some of you is already starting to step into your life. So keep working on all of this healing and then some great stuff is en route to you. But the healing first could be a Leo. Um, we see the lion there. Uh, and there also could be an earth sign that pops into the horizon as well. A little bit younger, a little less experience, a little more work focused, whereas the Leo seems to be a little bit more stable, a little bit more um, experienced and a lot more ready to settle down. So it depends on what kind of partnership you're looking for in your life. Um, I think the other thing here is what do you what, what do you want? This is a card that begs discernment, but doesn't necessarily symbolize it. So this is the important moment where you're going to say, um, in your manifestation mantras, you know, I'm ready for love and abundance in the highest forms. I'm ready for a partner that is, and then put your list together. Usually things that we all want there, I would say, you know, financially stable, um, emotionally and physically healthy, uh, ready for, you know, commitment, unattached, a bunch of things like that. Then you can start to think of what they look like and all that, but it's more important for the 
the attributes, the core soul attributes to be in place. And it doesn't need to be a list of more than five or 10, but there should be something, not just send me love because that is so generic and you don't know what kind of love. You wanna put a few constraints and you wanna add for my highest good of the highest form, this or better, that kind of stuff. So you're manifesting something great, but give some sort of a, it's like if you want someone to go shopping for you and, and uh, you need to tell them your style or you need to tell them your diet if they're getting food or clothes so that they get the right things. It's kind of the same thing when you're shopping for a partner, <laughs> putting love out there. You really want the highest form, the best possible um, energy. All right. For those of you that are single and happy, it's a good time to be single and happy. I think the thing to focus on here is um, clearing your mind. There's a lot going on. Clearing your space. There could be a need to, to change up environments, um, improving financial standing as, as well. Um, I do think that you're going to need to connect a lot with people. I, I think networking is what I would be focusing on, as I said earlier. Jobs and opportunities could come from this. I, I don't think I said that earlier, but, but it's coming through now because single and happy often has with it um, career connotations. So the network is everything. It's who you know, not just what you know. That's a piece of it. But sometimes the, the piece that's more important is who you know and how you connect with someone. So for those of you that are job seeking, even though we're looking at single and happy, um, I would say the thing that you'd be focusing on is really getting a rapport with the person that you're interviewing with once you get to that phase um, and, and really kind of opening up. Again, the heart needs to open up. That passion invites others in and allows for um, the growth and the development to, to take place and to take root in your life. All right, so that's everything as we look at love and relationships. Let's go ahead and move along to your, um, your destiny card. And then I'll take a look at some of your questions that you put out there for me uh, while I was walking Apollo. All right, so we have central awakening. So the sacral chakra, the second chakra, where we hold um, our creativity, our sexual energy, and also sometimes just the feeling of being able to express ourselves. That's really what's coming through is this is who I am. When we're children, this is sometimes expressed just in the clothing, right? When we stop letting our parents dress us and we start to sort of say, no, I want to wear this or I want to put, put this hat on this way or this color or purposely mismatch it because it's my choice. Um, and, and you can create a style in that way. Uh, when you think of musicians that have really memorable styles like David Bowie, Cyndi Lauper, Madonna, like back in the 80s, Prince, um, all of those that, that they had like these really iconic styles, <clears throat> Harry Styles nowadays would fall in there or um, <clears throat> Timothy Chalamet, right? Because basically they do whatever the heck they want and it's kind of fun to watch and see what happens. So style is a great way of expressing yourself and creating something. Um, it's not all that you are. It is external, but it is saying, look at what I can do and look at how comfortable I am in my skin. I can, I can rock anything, right? So express yourself uh, with your voice, with your fashion, with your words, with what you're doing in your life. The bolder, the better, basically, especially when we get a card like the King of Wands. Okay. All right. Let me take another drink here. And now we're going to move on to the big idea. <clears throat> okay. Big idea. Helping us focus on a key element that could bring success to our life and to our energy this month. We already understand that one of the focal points is finding your spark, right? Maybe we can connect this big idea with how to connect and how to find that spark. Okay, this is interesting. So walking away from criticism and letting whatever happens happen. So on, uh, in, well, now it's mostly social media, but nowadays there's always going to be a negative comment somewhere. You could be having the best day ever and you post a picture, you're happy or something, and then someone judges you for any number of things. Um, they don't know what's going on, but they write a nasty comment. Water off a duck's back or a frog's back in this case, right? We're not going to let that bother us. The, the frog is unbothered. He's like, that's fine. That's your thought. Didn't ask for it, don't really need it, whatever. Um, and I on honestly think sometimes, unless there's a constructive element to it, if you can discount it, and if you're about to share something, don't. Because if it's not elevating the conversation, 
then it's just going to kind of constitute chatter and it might get stuck in someone's head. You have to be very careful because we're going to be in retrograde for, for most of this reading. Um, you have to be very careful about how to communicate dislikes or, um, or constructive criticism. And it's better sometimes to stick just to a fact and say, we need to work on this. This is why this is, this is where it's not meeting up to this and just keep the emotional piece out. But basically it's saying, this is one of my favorite 10 of swords because they're over it. They're not going to take the bait. She's, she's moved on. Um, fun fact, there was a previous version. This is like the, the second 10 of swords in this deck. And you can tell even the illustrator, she's like, you know what? I'm just going to move on from this too. Um, there was another one where the person had like scars on her back or whatever. Um, and they chose to go down a different path because there was criticism. I, I did some research. I was like, oh, I didn't know there was a different 10 of swords. Um, so even them kind of dealing with that is like, I learned from my mistake and I'm moving on. Let's focus on something better. And also just sort of like deciding to walk a higher path and to let the negative comments go because there was no ill intent, but sometimes things happen. So kind of interesting, right? Um, I, I like this because we're not seeing a person in a pool of blood. We see someone who understands how this works, how the ending is. And they're like, I'm not going to go there. I've been there. That was another lifetime. That was a different me. So you're just going to, you're going to choose a different outcome and you're going to let the words go. Choose your words carefully, but also if other people are trying to trigger you, don't go there. I typically won't reply to negative comments for that reason because everyone's entitled to their thoughts, but I don't want to sit here and waste like 15 or 20 minutes engaging with someone in a very low frequency. What good is that going to do? That's just going to take me lower. Why go low? Go high, right? All right, let's focus now on blessings and blocks. What's coming through to help? What could possibly create a block for you? Blessing is the Page of Swords reverse, and the block is the Three of Pentacles in reverse. So let's talk. All right, for your blessing, we have uh, Page of Swords in reverse, which is basically saying getting to the point. So this month, when it's important to say or do something, don't hold back. Say what you need to do. It's going to get through. The one thing that I would say with this blessing is she's probably learned the lesson that uh, we were talking about the excessive multitasking. Could she be multitasking anymore? We see her holding on to those thoughts in the form of light bulbs. We see a bird flying around her head, two birds actually. She's reading a book and she's walking um, a, a tightrope, which is the sword. And basically, it's amazing that she got across in one piece. Sustainability is what we're looking at and burnout. This can be burnout. Um, and this can be sort of saying like, I don't need to go down that path of burnout. This is saying, I'm going to stop walk walking such a tightrope and I'm just going to do what I need to and get out. So better limits, um, concise conversation and listening. Page of Swords listens more than it talks. And that's going to save you from this experience as well. OK, so there we go. Um, your block this month could be seeking external validation. Three of Pentacles upright, one of the best cards you can get. To me, it shows mastery, learning. Um, it's a great card for getting recognized. And uh, basically, if you're a writer or if you're trying to deliver something or trying to finish something, this card shows that. It shows mastery and graduation. So you still have all of that stuff, but you may not get the five stars. You may not get the award that you're looking for. It may not be in first place. That doesn't take away from the fact that it's amazing or that you're amazing. So you may fly under the radar. But who knows when those contributions might actually come to light. So don't worry so much about everyone paying attention to, you know, the name on the billboard. You're part of that team. The last job that I worked at when I was doing corporate was in production. And that's very much behind the scenes. It taught me the value of doing most of the work that I did, you know, was actually all behind the scenes when I was working in like um, studio work, like uh, art direction and production. It's all behind the scenes. So there's value to that too. It's not always about being in front of the camera. So just do the right thing, do it well. Your moment in the spotlight will come when the time is right, when you least expect it. And you'll be very proud of the work that you've done. And people will know that you've done it because it was the right thing. <laughs> so that's the message with the, um, the block. You can actually spin it into a blessing if you focus on the quality of the work. All right, we're gonna look at viewers and readers' choices. Give me a second to see what you guys 
uh, wrote while I was walking my dog, and we'll see here. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay. Um, let's see. I wish I could stay. Let's see. Some, let's, I'm trying to see if anybody had some questions. Okay, suggestions about opening, working with the heart. Yeah, well, definitely. I think the four of pentacles is a good thing to look at as well. Um, okay, is there anything else that you guys wrote? I think that's about it. Okay. All right. So uh, not a lot of comments on that, which is fine. So let's go ahead and focus on what I want to pull here, and then you guys can focus on it. So the heart opening was one. So let's put that out there. If I missed anything, you can write it now. But we're going to focus on opening, and I'm going to also put like engaging uh, the heart chakra. I think the next thing that, I, that comes to mind is thriving amidst the change. I kind of want to do this one as a reader, so I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look at that, Jill. That's, that's the one that I'm focusing on. Um, let's see. Just because we can't ignore it. If I get like Devil, Ten of Swords, one of these has to be dealt with. So I'll look at the tower. Um, I'm going to put this one as one. If you want me to do two difficult ones, I'll put the Ten of Swords in there as well. So I'm going to say how to rise above conflict because that's basically the ten of swords um and uh the expressing yourself um finding courage for expression uh let me see if i can fit self in here self expression okay good you've got some great things to vote on while i take a look at the tower moment what is it about how can you thrive how can we prepare Sometimes we get a vision, sometimes we don't. So we're all here together. We can focus on how to make this worth it. Okay, so this kind of fits with someone just typed a note too, and this is in alignment with that. So um, someone's talking about healing and letting go. So we have the two ends of the, uh, like the Ten of Swords here. So the Ten of Wands is actually what you should be focusing on, which is moving on and moving. Um, I definitely get a big push for that. The Ten of Wands is changing your location, relocating, re focusing, um, getting out of your own schedule and your own place a little bit. Because of COVID restrictions and because of the way many of our jobs changed, um, like remote work has become a, a, a very popular option now. It would be good for you occasionally to even just get out of your office, your home office, and go somewhere else if you can, um, whether it's a different part of the house or a cafe or with some other people, maybe there's a smaller group of coworkers that you can work with. This is about changing that up a little bit. This is also about not taking on the weight of the change yourself. Let's take it away from work. Some of us are retired, some of us are students, some of us aren't working. Um, so the 10 of wands is an unburdened version of it here. Normally the 10 of wands would show someone doubled over a little bit, carrying all the weight. This illustration is saying, uh, and I found it pretty quickly here. So here's your regular 10 of wands. It's, it's definitely a lot. They're dealing with a lot. This one, she's learned the importance of delegation. The, uh, the bull basically here is carrying everything. And um, she is leading, she's, she's stepping into that king of wands sort of energy and saying, this is where we're going and sharing the load. So I think the most important thing for you to remember in this point of the journey as you step into change is... Let, let the change propel me. Let me um, lean on others. L you know, allow yourself also to delegate as well and just to, to focus on the fact that it will get easier. A little bit, some of you are climbing the hill, some of you are coming down the hill. If you're climbing the hill, I've been there. I'm also trying to go through some stuff right now and it, it can be challenging as you're doing that, but there always is that point, like when you're riding a bike where you've pumped really hard with both of your legs and everything and all of a sudden now you can you can just coast so focus on it will be great to coast but i've got to cycle a little bit harder right now to make sure that this happens and i think if you do that um, that's going to help you again when we go back into the cosmic timing that we talked about earlier this will be a big piece of that as well when you stop focusing on that that will help okay so let's take a look at what you guys chose for me Finding this, the courage for self-expression, what a great choice. Let's take a look and see 
uh, what's coming through for that. We talked before about like the importance of fashion, of also like just career choices and how definitive that is, but also how oddly enough, people really have a lot to say about who we date, what we do for a living and how we dress. Have you ever noticed that? Um, so let's see what's coming through on how you can express yourself and be yourself, even when people feel like they, they can say what they want to say. Look what happened. We got today's um, Eight of Wands card coming through with this. So if you are feeling propelled by what you're doing, if this is the fire or the fuel that makes you feel like, I, I can't wait to get up, I can't wait to do the next thing, then one of the things that I would say here is just express yourself a little bit louder. Keep doing it, amplify it a bit, and don't lose the spark. One thing that was really great, this was way back, I think I was in kindergarten, yeah. Um, there was a teacher, I told you how bad like my school system was when I was a kid, but it was that early, like kindergarten, which is before the first grade. Um, the, that teacher said to my parents, your son laughs too much and smiles too much. He's a distraction to children around him. Um, he needs to behave. And my dad said, I'm not going to break his spirit. That's not my problem. And uh, she, I remember like she was mean to me, that teacher. I remember her name too. You always remember the, the mean teachers, don't you? I remember the good ones too. But, um, but I remember one day just crying. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I'm just having a good time. And when you're that young, you don't always understand when to be quiet, how to focus. And I would just say there was better ways to handle it than to, they kept, even in kindergarten, I was in detention. <laughs> I was always causing the best kind of trouble, but I was a nonconformist from like the beginning. Um, and yeah, I uh, basically, thankfully, I never lost that ability to kind of like be myself, but it definitely caused a five of pentacles moment for me. You shouldn't be punished when you're young for being a free spirit for smiling and laughing. That happened a few times for me. Um, so they were like, you're, you know, you're, I, cause I, I would giggle or whatever as a kid and they would say that that would d disrupt the whole class. And my parents are like, you're literally keeping him after cause he laughs. That's crazy. Um, and it was crazy. So express yourself more and don't lose it. Um, someone doesn't understand you or someone's trying to clamp your, your, your sort of energy or your fire down. If you do that, your star energy depletes. So it's important for you to keep pushing forward and to find your tribe, because guess what? This Eight of Wands card represents other people who have a common interest with you. Uh, so I was in a, a place where people were low, low energy. The teachers weren't good and the school system wasn't good. Not all, there were a couple that were good, but most were, were pretty bad there. Um, so thankfully, a change, a movement helped with that. Um, and then I really got to just be myself and it was great and I thrived. So if you can't be yourself where you're at, be yourself somewhere else. Be, go where you can be yourself. That's the thing that I would say here with self-expression. Um, so it's, you know, I'm looking at some comments here too. The, the judgment always happens, uh, you know, like it's never going to go away. If you're doing the right thing, you're probably going to be provoking people in one way, shape or form because it's triggering them. I need to do movement in my own life or why? Why can't I do that? Or why is this person? You know, it's, it's usually like a control thing, a projection thing or self judgment thing that kind of then they put out on someone else. So don't let it stop you. Let it inspire you. It's telling you you're doing something interesting. If people are talking about you, they're talking about you. That means that you're actually creating positive movement as long as you're not hurting yourself or others. Obviously, that goes without saying. But if it's just you being iconic and original, Later, that actually seems like it's very, you know, normal. When we look back at what was controversial in like the 1980s or 1990s, by 2020 standards, 2022 now, but like now these things seem like they're nothing. Videos that were banned, books that were banned, books that are still banned. Um, they're some of the best pieces of literature, right? 1984 gets banned, um, you know. So why? It's, it's talking about free thought. That's why, actually. People don't want free thought. So keep your free thought, keep your free expression and get with a group of people that are behind that. This is a this is a community card. It's not always read as such, but it is. So find your tribe. That's what I'm getting here and keep moving, keep producing. Um, if you are like an artist, you know that not always the first piece of work will take off. Um, first albums aren't always successful. 
Like if you, uh, the other day I was, I forgot Janet Jackson had something before Control and she did. She had like a debut album and it was much different, but like Control is what lifted her off into the stratosphere and then things went much better after that. So sometimes like a first album, a first book, um, a first draft is just that. It's like, no, oh, this is this is who I am. But then the second time, the third sophomore slump doesn't always exist. Sometimes your sophomore effort is the best effort. So um, the the best is yet to come. Keep pushing. I think there's going to be even a bigger splash, and eventually someone will be scratching their head and thinking maybe they they didn't read you correctly. Okay, that's my take on that. All right, let's move on to the next piece. We're going to take a look now at the sun rising and moon messages and as i said earlier you can watch this uh, for any aspect of your chart you can watch it for other people in your life so um, we're going to look now specifically at sun rising and moon and after i do that i'll break down each of these messages sun rising and moon lots of emotional energy coming through for you gemini this month Okay, let's begin first with the sun sign messages, Queen of Cups in reverse. So it feels like this is a time for you to really experience a much needed, a well-deserved release in your life. Queen of Cups is saying, I'm just going to let this flow. I'm going to let this out. A lot of what we just talked about, and I'm not going to edit it so much. One thing that you could try to do, though, is to allow yourself to be a channel, but not become beholden to your emotions. <clears throat> the more frequently you can talk and express and explore all of this sort of sensual or inner sort of flame energy that we were picking up on, the less it becomes such a big deal because it, it's just an integrated part of your personality. Some of us were taught to repress, push back, or deny who or what we stand for. And so this month, the floodgates open when I'm looking at sun sign for Gemini. So for you, this is a month where enough is enough. You're just going to announce it, be it, and then it's going to get easier. The hardest part is the declaration or the opening or the channeling of that. But once the floodgate is open, everything is going to be okay. It's just that initial moment that it's going to take a little bit of a push here. Creativity is through the roof for you. So if there's anything that you felt stuck on, uh, I feel like you're going to have the ability now to get through that block, that creative block. And if you're blocked in one place, focus on something else. Yes, it's a good time for love. You may fall head over heels for someone. Um, you might fall a little deeper, get a little bit more connected. So protect yourself. Take it one step at a time um, and honor your, your sort of sensitivity this month. I think that's going to be really important. By and large, pretty good for the sun sign. I would say you just need to really um, focus on expression, healing, and a little bit of protection there, not in the way that you're not going to allow yourself to feel things, but that, that you're going to pace yourself, that you're going to not go head over heels over everything. Just breathe it one moment at a time. And remember that you don't have to rush to the destination, because if we look at the message from love, it says where you are is where it's at. Stay still until you are divinely moved, until you get a sign that it's time to move to the next level. OK, so sit with the situation for a second. Be in the flow of that situation and enjoy. You're, when, if, if you were asking the universe, when are, when, will, are we there yet? They would say you're where you need to be. You're, yes, you're there and there's more to come. But yes, you're already there. When we move to rising and ascendant, uh, we have the three of cups. Three of cups in reverse. So you're starting to think, how connected am I to this person, place, or thing? This is a card that comes through where sometimes You've been in something for a while, a job or a relationship specifically, and you think to yourself, how does this measure to where I thought I would be? Is this all that I ever want? Um, should we be opening ourselves up to different experiences, particularly like with career? So there's this question of commitment, basically. And, um, and it isn't always a bad thing. It's just sometimes you can double down and say, I'm exactly where I need to be. I'm with my best friends or, fr or family. I'm exactly in the space that I hoped that I would be. But if you're not, this is a time to also find that sort of spiritual tri uh, tribe. New people will be coming into your life. It does not have to just be romantic. The Three of Cups card has to do with um, new connections and new partnerships. And they can be in any way, in any shape or form, I should say. Uh, the only thing that I would say with this is it's typically not the longest term sort of energy. 
there is a sort of non-committal energy to the Three of Cups. If you're dating, you know, um, Three of Cups is not as strong as Two of Cups or the lovers, obviously. It's saying, I'm open to all experiences, not just this. So the openness is good, but if you're ready to commit to someone or something, have that talk as well. So it's putting that out on the table so that, remember what I, I put it in the slides, I don't know if I said it. So basically the praying mantis gets what it wants. So when we were looking at the, the three, no, I'm sorry, the four and the five of pentacles slide, I put a little bullet on there, I believe, that said, you have to ask for something if you want it. And so this is especially true as I'm looking at rising. And rising, by the way, always connects to your community, your work, your public sort of persona. So ask for something if you need it. You have a really good chance of getting it, okay? It's a good attractive energy. Um, yes, you should be going out and you should be um, networking, going to whatever it is, it's sort of public gatherings if you can, obviously safety notwithstanding. But uh, you have a chance of meeting some great connections when you put yourself out there. Okay, good. All right, and finally, let's take a look at the moon sign messages. This one is a change of perspective. So all of these had love in them. All of them have passion and all are water. Um, so with the two, I'm sorry, with the five of cups, there's always two cups around the main person. She's dipping her foot into one of those two cups and she's working magic very close to what the magician card would look like in this deck. And it's saying, I'm just, you know, I'm still getting over this. This could be heartache. This could be a misunderstanding. Uh, it could be something that just didn't work out the way you wanted to. And you're focusing just a bit on I could or should have done something different. Could have, should have, would have. But now you can affect what's next. And focus on the can, not the should have, could have, would have. And that's the best way to really embrace the Five of Cups. Also, with the two cups there, there's usually love and support right around you in friends, in family, and in resources. So you just have to tap into that omnipresent friend, family, resource energy, and things will go into a better trajectory. If you focus on all that wasn't or isn't, you're only focusing on the critical piece, not the constructive or the creative piece, which is important because this month is all about that creative spark. It's all about the ability for you also to leap into something new and to affect change in your life. Okay, so those are the sun rising and moon messages. Very interesting that they were all water based this month. Sorry, um, they're all water based this month. And um, to me, that shows a consistent sort of shift energetically for you to um, really focus on expression expression and that was very close to what you uh, had me look at which is to, to kind of like double down and say this is what I stand for this is what I want um, and uh, not to feel bad about that okay all right so let's take a look now at the uh, the final portion of today's reading I just want to make sure that we've covered everything we went through channel messages the Celtic cross <laughs> I took Apollo on a walk um, then we did the big ideas blessings block Viewer's choice, reader's choice, and yeah, we just did all of the different um, aspects there, sun, rising, and moon. So let's take a look now at a meditation before we get into any of that, and then we'll do a final card. So final card, by the way, if there's any questions that I haven't yet answered, this is your chance to throw it out there and say, I need some clarity on this or this, and I'll answer it. Um, before I do that, please, I only ask a couple times during the reading, um, hit the subscribe button if you're new. I'd love to see some new milestones met and reach some new people. And if you watch this on replay, um, engage with the video, leave a comment, uh, like it, and uh, opt into the notifications if you haven't. You can follow me on other social media platforms to get updates. Please remember, I don't use private messages, um, and I don't use, um, I don't offer any one-on-one uh, -on -one readings anymore private. It's just what you get here on YouTube. So if anyone offers you a private session or tries to chat with you, it's not me. If you do want to show love and support, you can do it right here with Super Chats, Super Stickers, and Memberships. And because I forgot to put this earlier, here's a link to all of my official social media stuff. So I'll pin that message and you have it in case you need it. Okay, let's get ready for the meditation. So for today's meditation, I really think we need to work on taking this internal spark of inspiration and like breathing life into it, bringing it into the here and into the now. So write down your question for me, then close your eyes and imagine that in front of you, you are holding a candle and a match. 
And um, this, this isn't just any candle in a match. This candle represents your inner flame. It's your soul's fire. And the match is really connected to your heart. You can imagine that it's even just sort of like a wand. Let's use a wand, it's more magical. So imagine you have your like Harry Potter moment here or pick your favorite magician, Gandalf, I don't care. So you have your inner sort of magician moment where you're, you have your wand and there's a little spark of light kind of starting to already form at the end. I want you to think to yourself, what is my spark? What sparks happiness, joy, passion into my life? What do I want to see over the next four, six, or eight weeks? See that spark, that energy starting to um, basically swirl around the, the tip of that magic wand and then touch it to the candle and watch as the flame lights up. And as it does that, I want you to see this beautiful envelope of light um, halo around your body. And you feel this warmth and this love that you've never felt maybe in this lifetime. It's the love that we feel in the presence of the angelic force. It's warm, it's engaging, it's, uh, it's absolutely forgiving and all seeing. And in this envelope of angelic light, you see your worth, you see your truth and you see your true colors, all of them, and you are shining that spectrum of energy towards your goal, your spark, your passion. The flame now is taking on many different colors and many different shapes. And as it dances, you can start to divine things from it. You can see something take shape or take form. See what your symbol is, see what it's showing you, see where it wants you to go next. Imagine that it's like looking in a crystal ball and you'll get a symbol from that that's gonna help you out. And if that's too much for you to focus on, just bask in the un, uh, unconditional love coming from your higher self and from the angelic realm as we meditate. Okay, relax. Let's uh, listen to the singing bowl for a moment and then I'll take a look at the final question. Take a deep breath, exhale. Now see that you are the love, you are the light, you are the energy that emanates around you. You have now basically taken that flame and that light of energy and it is encompassing you, you are within it. You are your passion, you are all of that. And imagine that whatever it is that you want to breathe creation into, it's already started. You just have to keep up with the momentum. Listen to today, today's uh, one card reading with the Eight of Wands. And basically remember that it's uh, today you're doing the preparation. And, and then after that, it's just all about liftoff, okay? Let's focus on your final question that you have. So open your eyes if you haven't already. Mentally connect with whatever that question is that you need insight on and release it. Focus on it and release it. And let me take a look and see what the universe wants to say. So interesting, such a synchronicity that we got uh, earlier here because we have the Seven of Swords. 
So remember, the Seven of Swords carries with it the element of surprise. Not the highest vibrational card we could pick in tarot, but there are some elements around it that are not necessarily bad. You could take someone or something by surprise, and that surprise could be a good surprise if you elevate this card. However, um, if it's a yes, no, this would be a not yet. Because with the Seven of Swords, there are things that have not yet come to light. You need to investigate something a little bit more. You need to spend a little bit more time on something. I want you to really explore all options in front of you before saying yes. So this is saying a little bit more is there. Bring another set of eyes, bring another set of ears, sleep on it before you make a final decision on something because you will learn more, you will garner more. And uh, one thing that I've learned time and again and was reminded of just recently, let's say you're waiting longer than you should probably should go in a different direction. If, uh, if it's a final decision, let's say you're, you're trying to um, buy something, rent something, um, date someone, and they're just, it's like days or a week goes by and nobody gets back to you. This is a time where you wanna kind of open yourself up to better paths and really think to yourself, is it the universe giving me a time and a pause to focus on exploration, expansion, something different? But I would say definitely be discerning, be um, outspoken, be curious, speak up, ask your questions, and you'll be able to learn this because um, you're watching this reading and you're intuitive and you've got the heads up here. So it's a not yet. Get some more information, basically, if it's a yes, no. And for the other things in your life, surprise can be good, but surprise can still be a surprise. So everything that I said at the beginning still holds true here, which is that you just want to be aware, okay? So there you go. That was a really cool reading today. Thanks for your patience in the middle. I will try when I edit to just trim that section down. But if not, everybody gets a chance to grab a drink, stretch a little bit, take a walk. And uh, you have Apollo to thank for that, who's super happy now. That <laughs> he's like all curled up in a little ball saying, thanks, Dad. All right. Um, so let's take a moment now to express gratitude. If it's your first time here, I want to welcome you. I hope you come back uh, again. I have a lot of different offerings. I do daily, weekly, monthly videos. Uh, the dailies are every day. The time changes. I'll try to get a day ahead soon, but I'm going through a lot of stuff here at the apartment where I have to pack stuff up and I'm, I'm looking at, you know, like I said, finding an office. So my schedule is busy outside of here. So give me, give me a little bit of flexibility on that. But I do dailies, usually the day of, sometimes the day before. I do monthlies and I, uh, a month ahead and I do weeklies a week ahead. So um, the monthlies are every Monday, Thursday and Friday and, and I'll have a schedule up soon. The weeklies are every Sunday, dailies are every day. And I also pepper in some additional videos as time allows. Um, with that being said, thank you to everybody who gave back. I want to especially call out any of the um, new members and then we'll say thank you to any super stickers or super chat. You can still do it now and I'll say thank you. All right, let's begin with the members. All right, so um, Judy, thank you so much. Um, I can't see the whole name, but I'm assuming it's like I love the skin that I'm in or something. So Judy, thank you for rejoining after nine months. I appreciate that. Mermaid Crystal, thank you as well. Um, new brand new member as well. Let's see, Crystal Gill, Luther, Bonnie Chan, Joan Young, and I think that those are all the newest ones from today or the day before. All right, now for anybody who gave a super sticker or a super chat, I wanna give a little bit of gratitude right now. All right, so we only have two today, it'll be easy. Debbie McGinnis, thank you for kicking things off today, and Faya R, thank you so much for your love and support as well. And uh, that, my friends, brings today's reading to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back again tomorrow, I believe, for Cancer. I'll double check, but um, the schedule should be on the main page, and then I'll put the next couple of readings up as well. All right? Until then, lots of love and light to all of you. Thank you for your time, your energy, and also your presence here. Keep that flame um, engaged this month. Really connect with your inner passion. That's where it's at. Again, we have this creative awakening that wanted to come through for you. And um, you can excel in any environment. And that's also a big blessing for you. So make it a great month. I'll see you soon. Uh, again, lots of love and light to you. Until we talk again, take care. Bye-bye.